Well, hey folks, it's your old pal King Krampus. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. Dungeons and Dragons over the years has made a few stabs at trying to have a Middle East themed setting. Uh, they have their Day of Al Akbar uh, adventure module. There's, of course, Al Qadim and the Emirates of Yalaram from uh, the Mistara setting. And so, in my efforts to create a, you know, Middle Eastern, what I'm calling a Levantine fantasy world uh, for my Spelljammer campaign for one of the other planets uh, in the star system where the Council of Worlds, Worms setting uh, takes place, uh, I've decided to just, well, be a little bit literal and actually take uh, the Day of Alak Bar adventure module and some materials from al and uh, the Emirates of Yularum, and a few other things. I'm going to use King of the Troll Haunt Warrens, some information from the Hero's Guide to the Feywild from 4th edition, uh, the Swamp Light Adventure for AD&D. I'm going to mix them all up together, or actually I already have, to create a living, breathing world, fill in a few other blanks here and there with some material from uh, the... the Modern, the modern day fifth edition Ravenloft books and uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Uh, so the basic idea: uh, you got a planet's about like the third the size of Earth, uh, more than a moon. You know, kind of like Mars ash in size. You know, it's not the biggest thing in the world. Uh, it's a pretty warm planet. The polar areas are at best temperate, but you don't really get any Arctic conditions anywhere. Only up in the highest mountain ranges do you see stuff like snow. The planet used to be a green jungle planet lush environment but there had been some sort of cataclysm 10,000 years ago uh you know a good chunk of uh the northern section of the planet uh kind of got rifted away the seas change boil off a new sea forms up in the northern polar regions and this big gap left uh most of the surviving humans and whatnot uh flee and tank sanctuary and the remaining green areas around the southern polar uh zone while the great equatorial ocean they used to wrap around the planet turns into just a big massive desert wasteland uh during like the next ten thousand years civilization recovers i'm going to use har akir from uh, the van richten's guide to ravenloft is kind of like what that kingdom had once been you have like the pseudo egyptian light kind of society but because of events that are going on on first world where the council of worms takes place um, you know, initially there was, you know, that first purge where the dragons hunt down all the humans. That's part of the history of Council of Worms from the second edition version of the, of the Council of Worms uh, campaign setting. And then through the adventures described in the Council of Worms campaign setting, uh, you, 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 you know, get this long arcing storyline about some dwarves and also dark elves, uh, you know, become a threat to dragon kind and so this sparks a second larger purge where they don't just wipe out all the dwarves and elves and gnomes on their world but they also go to the other planets in their star system and just you know, like erase all these threatening humanoids and then they replace them by uplifting or encouraging the immigration of reptilian races that they find more favorable and speak draconic and all that kind of stuff so basically what happens is a thousand years ago, the human civilization on uh, the desert planet is completely wiped out when, by, when dragons show up. And uh, for the next 300 years, you have a tyranny of dragons that rule the world. Uh, as they basically resettle the northern regions and found a bunch of cities, they bring in a bunch of Yanti purebloods and uh, lizard folk. And uh, the turtles, I'm going to say turtles were already native to the planet. And Leonin had come in at a different point from their own star system. Uh, like the underlying world has a lot of like you know uh, Greek myth kind of stuff. Some of the other non-playable races that are also out there are things like satyrs and centaurs and cyclops. Uh, and they're all kind of viewed as a pagan peoples, especially since 700 years ago by the game's timeline, uh, wizard arose, taking the name Al Kalim from Emirates of Yarum, uh, who basically you know went on a pilgrimage and united all the free peoples of this planet together to overthrow the tyranny of dragons. And then before he ended up ascending and moving on, he creates a religion where he founds a temple of law and a temple of chaos and basically tries to encourage the population to, instead of worshiping gods or worshiping dragons, to just kind of like, you know, wor worship their ethical structures and stay united in, in kind of like a mutual interracial brotherhood. And part, the reasoning why in this setting you have some of the the various sects of this religion uh, where some, you know, will like wear veils and burqas and stuff is uh, 
it's not because of, you know, like sexual repression like we have in a real world, but it's because Alkaline did that to encourage this kind of symbolic sense that, you know, regardless of whether or not you're a lizard person or a snake person or a lion person, you're all united together in the brotherhood of Alkaline. And so, the, you know, just disguising your face, you know, makes everyone the same as kin to Alkaline and all that kind of stuff. I'm using some of the religious sects from the uh, Emirates of Yalarum, like the Preceptors and the Kin, to be your fundamentalists or your more cosmopolitan types, uh, which does not uh, map perfectly onto the Law Chaos thing. That, that's kind of like a four-point axis for characters that are part of the mainstream culture. Um, you know, because like, and like in the real world, you know, uh, trying to create any sort of fantasy setting uh, based on kind of, you know, vaguely Muslim culture kind of stuff, comes down to, you know, a thing where it inevitably kind of turns into, you know, Arab fetishism. And to avoid that, uh, I'm kind of having, like, the different races, or I guess we're calling them species now, finally, on this planet, uh, kind of symbolically represent different uh, cultures that, you know, uh, uh, gained prominence in, uh, in the greater Islam Islamic bubble. Uh, the Yanti are kind of a stand-in for your Arab tribes. Uh, the Leonin are your Turks. Uh, the Tortles are your desert-dwelling Berbers. Lizard folk are the, the poor enslaved Sudanese and Swahili peoples. And, uh, you know, the, the centaurs and satyrs and cyclops are just kind of considered to be, you know, um, pagans. And, you know, living in areas where the, the, the rest of the races normally don't go. The satyrs live at the extreme northern pole. Centaurs are, you know, viewed as like horrible desert barbarians but they actually actually you know have some rather pleasant lands further south of that that giant ocean desert that wraps around the equator um a rear i'm treating uh the, the city of kaibar is where you know you have the sultan of the planet uh you know a symbolic emperor a rear is situated in between in a neutral zone between the emirates of Yalaram, where which are under the control mostly of the yanti and the uh Kalim, uh, which is uh, the land uh, mostly ruled by the uh, Leonin. M most of these places, especially in the cities, you'll see, you know, your normal mixture of peoples is just in Yanti lands, you'll typically see Yanti nobles and Yanti leadership. And in Leonin lands, you'll typically see Leonin leaders and so on and so forth. Uh, for Kalim, I'm using... Uh, both the, the Golden City of Hazus box set, which you can get in print on drive through RPG, uh, as well as uh, Kalimport, uh, ripping that off of uh, the, the Faerun settings. As Kalimport is amongst my favorite city settings ever designed for Dungeons and Dragons, period, end of story. And yet it kind of just gets glossed over in the modern day 5th edition presentation of uh, Forgotten Realms. You, you get, you know, that little ghetto of people from Kalimport and Baldur's Gate, but that's as close as you really get to portraying Kalimport. Uh, I, seriously, if you've never seen it, if you go on to DriveThruRPG, you, you can get the print copy or the PDF. It's a, it's a wonderful, dynamic city setting. One of the few city settings that uh, actually feels like it's appropriate for starting level characters to be adventuring in and stuff like that. That's all kind of a side note. So anyway, so yeah, for 700 years, uh, this, this, civil, this multiracial civilization has arisen. Um... Like, you do occasionally have people who still worship the old Egyptian-style gods of Harakir. Uh, they call themselves the Shrouded because of their own religious things of worshiping the dead and stuff. They'll keep their faces covered so they're often easily mistaken for or they will pretend to be members of the Kin faction. Uh, there's also dervishes, which are like your, your desert tribes, your, you know, your desert nomad types. Mostly turtles, but not exclusively turtles. Uh, they're technically a pagan people, but since the, the desert tribes sided and helped Alkalim in his war to overthrow the dragon tyranny, uh, they, they get lumped in as being an approved non-infidel type. And also, uh, just, just, just to have it there in the setting, although I have no particular ideas for it to necessarily come up in any adventures anytime, even remotely soon, in the lands of Yalarum, uh, there will be a, uh, a cult that worships the Kuatoa, who uh, live in like an underground rivers and lakes that are underneath the desert lands of Yalarum. And the people who worship them are just called the fishers. So anyway, that's uh, my stab at making a big, grandiose, uh, Levantine-flavored D&D world using mostly materials 
that are already out there for AD and D and just kind of mix and matching them together to create something a bit more dynamic and I think robust. I don't know. We'll see. It's probably all bigoted. Obviously, I'm white, so I have no no choice but to to grind the mythology beneath the heels of my jackboots and my effort to co-opt other cultures to entertain myself. But God damn it, I'm just so bored of Western European tropes. And Islam is not a race. In fact, the race, many of the races that are most associated with Islam are actually Caucasian, according to anthropological science. So I'm not going to feel bad about it. And uh, you don't have to feel about it either. Feel free to hit like and subscribe. Watch my channel for more videos like this whenever I feel like uploading things, which sometimes is a lot, sometimes is not. You can also check me out on DriveThruRPG. There's a whole publisher page with 22 different Total Party Skills books, including titles such as Escape from Ancient Egypt or uh, Pax Romana, Werewolves of the Republic, set during ancient Rome. Uh, and, hey, it's Krampus Knock today. Why not check out Dr Dracula's Carpathian Christmas, the Christmas game I made. It'd be a great little adventure to uh, throw at your players this holiday season. So uh, find links. You, you know the drill, all that kind of stuff. Have a Merry Krampus, and stay waspinated.